Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Yasharal. Welcome again to another edition of Watchmen of the Faith Ministries. My name is Kasada Ba. Now, first and foremost, before we do anything, we have to make sure that we give all praises, respect, and honor to the Father, Ab Yahuwah, for sending his son, Yahusha HaMashiach, who was that atoning sacrifice for the nation of Yasharal. Right? I'm going to say it again. Yahushua HaMashiach was that atoning sacrifice for the nation of Yasharal. Now, quickly, I'm a, this is going to be real quick here. All right? The redemptive role of the Messiah was to die for the adulterous woman. Who is the adulterous woman? The adulterous woman is the bride, the nation of Yasharal. Now, when the groom died, this reconciled the difference of sin, bringing us back into covenant relationship with the Father again. Now, being that this was done, it is our responsibility as brides to know what is our responsibility, okay, in this Torah walk, all right? It is very important. Again, it is so important for the bride to overstand her walk in Torah, all right? Because right now, for what I'm seeing, a lot of us are not overstanding our roles as brides in this walk. Meaning this, it is the bride's responsibility, all right, to be totally submissive to the groom. I'm going to say it again. It is the, uh, it is the bride's responsibility to be totally 110% submissive to the groom. That's our responsibility because the groom died for the bride, all right? That is so, so important. Now, overstanding Torah is going to be uh, the key to overstanding scripture. There's a lot of us who have prerequisites to the Torah, meaning this. I'm going to show a quick example, all right? I have two pieces of paper here, all right? Two pieces of paper. Now... The one on my right is going to represent the Torah, all right? The one on the left is going to also represent the Torah. Now, the groom gives the bride the Torah, all right, the ketubah. This is what's happening in Israel, all right? This is the bride's version of the Torah. This is what the bride is doing. She's looking at the ketubah, all right, and she's saying this, well... I'm reading this, but this is what I want to do. I want to take, I can't do this part of the Torah. I don't really want to do this part either. Uh, because of emotions, I don't want to do that either. All right. And then she presents this to the groom. And I'm looking at this as the Torah. Now, you are taken away from the Torah when this is the original Torah, and you're telling me that this and this are the same. And so I now look. I said, how can this and this be the same? Yes, sure all. This is what I'm saying in, in, in total. There is no compromise. There is no compromise. Just like Brother Madat Yahu. From Virginia, share with me last night. If we're talking about culture, you must eat the whole roll. All of it. All right. There is no more compromising. The reason why we're in this situation that we're into today is because the bride wants to always compromise. Compromising is done. All right. Me personally. All right. Whatever it is. That the Father Yahuwah wants me to do, I must do. When I come to the Father, all right, with a Torah like this, this means that I'm not 100% useful to the body. In order for me to be 100% useful to the body, I must abide by all of the Torah like this. This and this don't look the same. When I present myself again to the Father, I must agree to all of the Torah, all of it, not this. 
I have no right as the bride, okay, to begin to deviate from the Torah by taking this off. That doesn't apply to me. This is going to hurt my feelings, okay? And what if mommy and daddy don't like it and then present it back to me like this and say, Kasada Ba, listen, you know what? This is the Torah. This is not the Torah, all right? This is not the Torah. This is the Torah, all right? This right here. This is the ketubah. Now, let me go ahead with the subject here, all right? Again, we're talking about the cares of the world. The reason why I'm doing this show called The Cares of the World, because there seems to be, um, when I'm watching YouTube, Facebook, a lot of mores seem to be overly concerned about what's going on with um, the police officers and um, the killings that's going on in our so-called black communities, all right? And I'm going to use that word real loosely, so-called black communities, all right? Um, I just want to let all of the mores know. I want to let all of the sisters know that, listen, there's a weeding out process going on. And me personally, I wouldn't march, okay, one step, okay, for the cause of those Negroes that are dying at the hands of those police officers, right? I wouldn't march one step because we're going to have to ask ourselves, these so-called Negroes that are dying, okay, in the streets at the hands of these police officers, the first question should come to your head is this, were they following Torah? Were they following Torah? If they were not following Torah, let the chips fall where they may. It's just as simple as that. Oh, Kasada Ba, you're a just incompassionate person. You, you don't have love and concern for your people. Yes, I do. But to be more direct with it, I love those that follow Torah. I would give my life for those that follow Torah. But those that are not following Torah, all right, they're weeds. And the weeds must be burned. It's just as simple as that. Now, I did a lot of talking. Let's now go to scripture to back up everything that I'm saying so that you won't say that, you know what? Kasada Ba is just making things up, all right? Let's go to 2 Ezra, the 8th chapter. And I'm going to start at verse 40, all right? And this is Yahuwah speaking, all right, through his Malachim, through his messengers. Likewise, as I, Yahuwah, has spoken now, so should it come to pass. We're talking about those who have gone into the cares of the world and want to do marches and you're screaming, you're throwing up all of these Facebook pictures of police officers killing young black men it seems your heart is gone too far to the left all right there's something else that's going on here for as the husbandman soweth much seed so we have to identify who's the husbandman that's sowing the seed all right for as the husbandman soweth much seed upon the ground and planted many trees and yet the thing that is sown good in this season cometh not up. So we have to ask ourselves why. Neither doeth all that is planted taketh root. Why? Even so is it of them that are sown in the world. They shall not all be saved. I'm going to say it again. They shall not all be saved. And the reason why they're not going to be saved is because they're not following Torah. Simple. So don't cry for those so-called Negroes, um, Puerto Ricans, whoever is, is dying out there at the hands of these police officers, because the scripture is clearly telling us here in verse 40 that I've sown it in good seed i sown a good seed in the right season but when it sprung up it didn't take root and what the father is trying to explain to us not everyone is going to be saved let me read on i Ezra answered then and said if i have found esteem let me speak like as the husband's seed perished it came not up and received not the rain in due season or if there come too much rain and corrupt it, 
even so perished man also which is formed with thy hands and is called thy own image because thou art like unto him for whose sake thou hast made all things and likened him unto the husbandman's seed let me go, drop down a little bit verse 46 then answered he me and said things present are for the present and things to come for such as be to come for thou comest far short Ezra, that thou shouldest be able to love my creature more than i so you see what's happening here now i overstand your concerns all right they're israelites but again overstanding the times that we're living in look at what was told to ezra because What's going on in the world today, all right, where, where I see that there's an over-concern, Ezra had the same issue where he was over-concerned, and look at the response that was given to Ezra concerning his over-concernment. Listen, verse 46 again, then answered he me and said, things present are for the present, and things to come for such as be to come. For thou comest far short that thou shouldest be able to love my creature, my creature more than I. But I have oftentimes drawn near unto you and into it, but never to the unrighteousness. All right. So we have to um, make sure that we understand what's going on here. It's not like the father hasn't cried out for them to, all right, to shub, to return, to tashuba, to repent. But what do you really believe is going to happen when the father calls and you don't answer? What do you believe that the end consequences is going to be? I'm talking again out of love to those mores who are overly concerned about the deaths that are happening in our community at the hands of police officers. What do you believe is going to happen? We're supposed to be abiding under the shadow of Yahuwah. Now, when we abide under the shadow of Yahuwah, we know that there's protection. Let's go to some more scripture, all right? Bear with me for a little while here. Let's go to the book of Yeremiah. Yeremiah. All right, this is all freestyling here today. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah. Let's go to the seventh chapter. The seventh chapter. I'm, I'm not here to hurt anybody's feelings or to seem like, again, I'm not being compassionate. But as far as what I see that's going on in overstanding the redemptive role of the Messiah, let the chips fall where they may. All right. Let the chips fall where they may. Um, this is Yahoo, the seventh chapter. And I'm going to start at the 12th verse. And I'm going to read down a little bit. Excuse me. I'm going to start at the 11th verse. Is this house and this house is pertaining to not just the physical building, but the individuals that's living in the house, the bets. We're talking about the people in this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Which is a question. Behold, even I have seen it, saith Yahuwah. But go you now into my place, which is in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Yasharal. And now because you have done all these works, saith Yahuwah, and I, and I spoke unto you. This is the thing now. We're talking to Israelites. Look at the decree that the father is making to the whole house of the nation of Yasharal. Listen again. Thus said Yahuwah Elohim. And I have spoken unto you, rising up early and speaking, but you heard not. But you heard heard not and i called you but you answered not therefore 
So let's look at now the repercussions of what happens when the father calls you and you don't respond. The consequences, Yashiro, can be deadly, extremely deadly. When the groom calls his bride and the bride doesn't respond, the penalty is death. Death. All right. It's time to take the gloves off, all right, and show the people, Yasharal, their transgressions. And we can't be compassionate with our people because the scriptures tells us that these are a stiff-hearted, hard-headed, disobedient people. We read on. Therefore, will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein you trust, and unto the place which I gave to you, and to your fathers as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight. I'm going to read it again. And I will cast you out of my sight as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim, northern kingdom. Now, verse 15 it speaks, is speaking volumes, all right? When the father removes his hand from you because you're not following Torah, Again, my question is to you, what do you believe the consequences is going to be? Now, let me get personal with you to let you know where I'm at in these scriptures here. I love my family, okay? But this thing is coming down to the wire. All right? Mother, brother, sister, father, aunt, uncle, niece, wives, children, grandkids, the whole nine yards. It is your responsibility to follow Torah. If you're not under the shadow or the teachings following the instructions of Torah, again, the consequences can be deadly. Very deadly, all right? Our responsibility as mores, all right, is to uplift the people, show the people what's going on around us, have them to understand now or overstand the different levels of Torah, all right, the Peshat, the Ramez, the Drash, and the Sad level. We have to make sure that they overstand not just the surface, but the hidden message behind what's going on so nobody loses track here. Because what I see that's happening is that because of the deaths that's happening in our so-called community, a lot of us are becoming too emotional. All right. You have to follow Torah. There is no comp compromise here. No compromise. That's the reason why I brought out the illustration earlier about some people believe that this is the this is Torah. This is Torah here where the father presented this. This is what you said. I do to Asa. I do. You said I do to this. But when you got this, you said, well, this doesn't apply to me. I can't accept this. I can't accept that. And so I start to hear all of this emotions. I'm like, wow, where's all this coming from? Whenever a person tells me that they can't do this and I can't do that, this means that they're not tired of their captivity yet. They still need a couple more back um, slashes, okay, in order for them to understand what's going on. Me personally, I have enough. All right. I had enough where now I feel that I must submit to the father of Yahuwah and whatever it is that the father needs for me to do. All right. I must do it. All right. If I can't be used, I'm useless. It's just as simple as that. All right. Let's get back to the scripture here. Therefore, will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein you trust and into the place which I gave to you and to your father's as I have done to Shiloh, and I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out your um your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Now listen now, verse 16 is going to be very important. Therefore, pray not for this people. All right, again, therefore, pray not for this people, neither lift up cry, nor prayer for them, neither make intercessions to Yahuwah, for I will not hear you. So you tell me, what does that mean? Yasharal, please, okay? Bavakasha, please, listen. 
Shammai to what's going on. These same Negroes, okay, that are dying in the streets are the same ones who are saying, yo, my nigga, you got to rep your hood. Georgia King Apartments, all right, down on Bergen Street in Newark, all right, is one of the most notorious projects out there in Newark, all right? Notorious. And those jokers down there, they get it in, all right? They get it in, all right? There's um, prostitution, drug selling, gun selling, some of everything going on in Georgia King Apartments, all right? And, um... According to scripture, when I see things begin to happen where drug deals go bad, gun sales go bad, prostitution goes bad, I can't share a tear for those people there. Not at all. Even though that they're Israelites, the things have to go back to what I said earlier. Okay? Um, they're tears. And they must be weeded out. We're living in a time now where the father is cleaning house. And if we get um, oversensitive or emotional about the killings that's happening in Yasharal, you're not going to be able to make the rest of the trip. All right? Because we're only touching the brink of the iceberg here. This death or this sentencing that's being uh, pronounced against Israel it's going to happen even in our own houses. Those of us that is following Torah, the father is personally coming through or to each and every one of our houses. And he's going to be doing a whole lot of purging. All right. So what's going to happen now is that whether or not brothers are going to be able to endure to the end, the way that it tells us in the book of Matthew Yahu, the 24th chapter is something we're going to have to wait and see. All right. This is how serious this thing is coming to. Verse 16. Therefore, pray not for this people, neither lift up cry, nor prayer. Okay, palal, thapala, don't pray for these people, for them, neither make intercessions to me, for I will not hear thee. Now, those that are overly concerned about these deaths, listen to what Yahuwah is saying real carefully here now. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem? You're not seeing what they're doing? I'm going to lay it down to you straight, okay? Uh, no bars hold, all right? If we had the opportunity to resurrect those Negroes who died at the hands of those cops, all right? Because this is all being done by the will of Yahuwah. If we had the ability to resurrect them, I guarantee you that they still won't follow Torah. They still won't do it. We're talking about a rebellious people, a people who refuse to follow Torah. Again, this is the contract. Yasharal has taken the contract, all right, and ripped it into shreds by saying this I can't do I'm not emotionally ready to do this 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 and this all right and whenever a person I don't care who it is can't commit totally to Torah right now at this particular junction all right in this walk you're not fit all right to be the bride that the groom is looking for. It's just as simple and plain as that. It, it gets no plainer, all right? Let me read on some more. Yasharal, see thou not what they do in the cities of Yehuda and in the streets of um, Jerusalem? Listen, the children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other Elohims that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, saith Yahuwah? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Verse 20, Therefore thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, 
Behold my anger. Behold my anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beasts and upon the trees of the field and upon the fruit of the ground and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Should not be quenched. So my question is to you. When I read Yahoo the seventh chapter, and I started at verse 10 and read down to verse 20, what are you getting out of what I just read there? Because I don't want it to seem like, oh, Kasadaba is saying what he's saying, and he's not really understanding the, the whole picture. I have called, and you have not answered. So the question is again, what do you think the end result will be? What do you think the end result will be? Because this is the thing. If we overstand from example on what happened, even in the garden of the God of Eden, we have a situation where Adam and Kahua, all right, didn't want to abide by the laws, statutes, and commandments, all right? The father called, all right, and they hid themselves. He called, all right, Quora called, all right, and they didn't respond to the call. And so when the groom now checks the bride, well, I called you. Why didn't you come? And she began to give excuses. See, again, the contract must be followed. And being that they didn't follow the, um, the contract, they were kicked out of the garden. So when we were so when we were kicked out of the garden, all right, all kinds of things began to happen because we were no longer under the complete shadow of Yahuwah. And that's what's happening in our community. All right. Those Israelites or so-called Israelites that are dying, they're not under the protective covering of Yahuwah. So don't lose any sleep stop i mean i'm not saying stop put uh stop putting up the um the videos of police shootings and things like that it's just that um we have to be able to discern a little bit better than what we're doing all right and not get over emotional about what's going on all right now let's go to some more scriptures to prove what i'm saying here all right um this is all going to be off the top Let's go to um, the book of, let's go to the book of Yeshiyahu, all right? Let's go to the book of Yeshiyahu. Bear with me for a moment here. Bear with me for a moment as we're going to get some more scripture here to prove everything that I'm saying here, all right? We're going to prove all things. Let's go to the book of Yeshiyahu. The 42nd chapter, verse 22. Verse 22. But this is a people, we talk about Yasharal here, this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none delivereth. So we have to ask ourselves, how did the nation of Yasharal become a people that is robbed and spoiled? How did that happen? This didn't happen. My argument is because they were following Torah. The reason why they become a spoil and they are a robbed and um, oppressed people is because they're not following Torah. If we were following Torah, the scripture said that I would make you the head, the resh, or the rash, and not the heel, the aquab. All right? I would not make you the aquab, the heel, but I would make you the resh, the head. And being that Yasharal is not, okay, the head, we are now the, the aquab, what do you believe that's going to happen? Instead of the head, you're now the foot. Let's, let's keep on going here, all right? This is getting real, really easy here. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, 
and none delivereth for a spoil, and none, and none saith restore. Verse 25, who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Yaakov for a spoil? Wait a minute. So there's something else going on behind the police officers that's who's doing the killing. But my argument is going to be this, is that who's putting the spirit on those police officers to kill those tares that's growing amongst the wheat? According to what I'm reading here, it is Yahuwah who's putting the spirit on those cops to weed out the tares for you. Because I believe those same um, Negroes and Puerto Ricans that are dying in the streets, if they didn't die in the, in the streets, guess what would happen? At the end of the day, they would come into your house, rape your wife, rape your daughters, and take everything that you have in your house. So when I see these things happening, I say, listen, you know what? One less tear. One less tear. Let me read on here. Because I believe that I'm going to lose a whole lot of um, friends here. All right? A whole lot. Who gave Yaakov for a spoil and Yasharal to the robbers? Did not Yahuwah? He against whom we have sinned? He against whom we have sinned? I'm going to say it again. Against he against whom we have sinned, for they would not walk in his ways. Direct, direct. They would not walk in his ways. So he gave them for uh, for prey. Again, what do you believe is going to happen when you don't abide by the laws and statutes and commandments? The consequences could be deadly. Deadly. And the last thing that we want to do is fall into the hands of Yahuwah, okay, under the curses. We don't want that because it was explained to us in the book of Deborah, the 28th chapter, okay? Choose life that you may live. But we collectively as a people chose, chose to do it our own way. And so now when the enemy comes to the door, all of a sudden now, woe is me. Oh, he was a good boy. He got all straight A's in school. He never bothered anybody. But when you begin to do the investigation, he did um, home invasions, all right? He raped women. He sold drugs to people that looked just like him, okay? Further, okay, um, killing the people. This is what he was doing on the side when mama wasn't watching. This is what little Johnny was doing when daddy wasn't watching. When the scriptures clearly teaches us, all right, that our responsibility with our children is to teach our children the ways of Yahuwah so that as when they grow up older, they will not depart from the law. Those were the instructions. But what is happening today is that we're into a whole lot of foolishness. And being that we're into a whole lot of foolishness, all right, there's repercussions for that. And when the adversary comes, all of a sudden now, let's march. Me, I wouldn't march from, from here to this wall here, but not march. It's, the scripture says, pray not for these people. Let me read on some more. For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient to his law. Therefore, Yahuwah have poured upon him the fury of his anger. Verse 25 again. Therefore, Yahuwah have poured out upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. And he have set him on fire round about. Yet he knew not and it burned him. Yet he laid it not to heart. Huh? Laid it not to heart. Meaning this. Yasharal, let him go. Let them go. All right. All of this is being done 
for you. Okay, I will kill. This is what Yahuwah is telling us here now. I will kill. All right. To preserve the life of the righteous. And the righteous ones who will, are those who obey the laws, statutes and the commandments. Because there are some that are saying that, you know what? We can't sing this song in this strange land. And this song that we're talking about is Torah. But I beg to differ. I believe that we can uphold Torah in the land of our enemies. I believe that we can do it. All right. Now, let's go to some more. All right. I'm not done yet, but I'm almost done. All right. Um, let's go to. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let's go to the book of Proverbs here. Okay, let's go to the book of Proverbs and see what we can dig out of there. The book of Proverbs. And, and, and please, by all means, um, give me, hit me up through text, email. I'm on Facebook. If anybody has a problem with anything that I'm saying, because I really believe that I'm going to lose a whole lot. Uh, but that's okay. You know what? I'm going to stand for Torah. Listen to what Yahuwah is saying in the book of uh, Proverbs, the book of Mishli, um, 1 and 20. It says, Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of the concourse, in the opening of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. All right? Fools hate knowledge. Again, I'm talking about those so called Negroes and Puerto Ricans who we say are Israelites that are dying in the streets, who are dying in that community. What are you really to make of all of this? I'm reading it straight out of scripture here. Why so much concern about? Those who are not following Torah. Why? Like I read in 2nd Ezra, the 8th chapter. Love thou them more than me, I, Yahuwah. I'm the one that created them, gave them the laws, statutes, and commandments, told them the benefits of being a bride and being submissive, but we collectively, as a people, chose to do the other. And being that we chose to do the other, expect me and others who think like me to cry and mourn over those who, when the Father called, they refused to, um, to return. Okay? Shub, repent, Teshuba. Come on now, all right? Listen to what Yahuwah says, verse 23. Turn or return, okay, you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my set apart spirit on you. I will make known my Debarim unto you. Now listen to verse 24. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. So when a person stretches out their hand, I'm trying to offer you help is what Yahuwah is telling us. I'm trying to offer you help. I'm trying to offer you a way out. But the rebellious children of Israel refuses. I'm going to say this right here. All right. There's a lot of people saying, oh, Esau is a so-called white man and all this other stuff. You know, I'm not even going to get into that. But how wicked and evil he is. He does this. He does that. Let me clear the record here. All right. Let me just clear the record. Out of the 70 nations, okay, that the scriptures talks about, out of all 70, the nation of Yasharal is the most wickedest nation out of all 70 nations. <gasps> oh, Kasadabah, how could you say that? 
because you were given the law, statutes, and commandments. You saw the manna fall from heaven. You saw the quails fall from heaven. You saw the pillar by day. You saw the, um, the pillar of fire by night. You saw those things. You heard, okay, the voice, the ka'al. You heard that, the, the voice of Yahuwah. You heard that. And right after that, a couple of weeks later, as Moshe goes up to the top of the mount, he comes down. Yasharal is worshiping a golden calf all over again. This is how treacherous, all right, the heart of the adulterous woman is. She was a whore from the beginning, and she's still a whore today. And I'm referring to the nation of Yasharal, and I'm talking about the book of Yakazquio, um, the 16th chapter, when Yahuwah himself said, you know what, in the day that I found you, you was a filthy whore. A filthy whore in the day that I met you, but I said, live. Live. I brought you up. Okay. I put a gold chain around your neck. I put diamond earrings in your ear. Even in the midst of your forehead, I put all I put on, gave you leather. I gave you fine linen. But what did it say? It said Yerushalayim waxed fat and she kicked. She said, My hands have done all of this. And now I'm going to ask you again. What do you believe the end result is going to be when you don't follow Torah? You really want to cry for these people? Well, you might say, Kasad about this guy, Michael, okay? He was a good guy. My argument is this. The Most High is not a terror to good works. There's still something else going on behind the scenes. Every single death is justifiable in the eyes of Yahuwah. That's where I'm at. I'm going to draw this line because there is no middle ground. Let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. That's what the scripture tells us, all right? You're either going to follow Torah or you're not. It's simple as that. This is not the full contract that you agreed to, Asa, at Mount Sinai. The word Asa means I do. You said I do, not to this. You've taken the law, you've taken the Torah, and you have said that I can't do this, this, well, that's a little too hard. I can't do this and I can't do that. And then you want me to believe that this is the same as this. I can't agree with you. I'm going to look at you like you're crazy. Follow all of Torah. Everything that's written in Torah is applicable to you. All of it. All of it. No man, no woman should be saying, I can't do this and I can't do that in Torah. She shouldn't be saying that. He shouldn't be saying that. If they are saying that, you know what? They're not ready yet. Simple as that. You're not ready. This is big boy talk here. This is a grown man's walk. This is a grown woman's walk. If you can't be a grown man and walk the walk, then you can't walk. If you can't be a grown woman and walk the walk, then you're not right. You're not ready yet. And I'm not mad at you. Because everybody grows, all right, at their own level. But right now, let grown men handle grown men business. And let grown women handle grown women business, all right? Because there's a business that we need to tend to. And that business is uplifting the nation of Yasharal. All right. Now, back to Proverbs. OK, the book of Mishli, um, 120. The first chapter is go to 25th verse. But you have set at naught all my counsel. The counsel comes through who? The watchman. And when and with none of my reproof. Just listen to what Yahuwah is saying. Being that I called and you didn't answer, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. So being that I called again, I'm going to harp on that until the end. Being that I called, when your calamity come, Yahuwah himself said, I'm going to laugh at you. I'm going to laugh at you. I forgot who it was. 
But there was somebody on Facebook they had on their wall where there was a, a so-called Negro. He must have just gotten beat up, jumped, or whatever the case might have been. But this guy was laying on the ground unconscious. Unconscious. A Negro comes with his shirt off, and I'm just paraphrasing it. Rep your hood, nigga. This is how we do it down in South Central. This is how we do it. The guy is on the ground unconscious. He comes and takes his Timberland boot and kicks the dude like he's kicking a football as hard as he could. Kicks the guy in the head and it looks like the guy lost a tooth. Now, all of this is being done while the guy is on the ground unconscious. My argument is this. That idiot Negro who done that to that guy that was on the ground that was uh, that is uh, that was unconscious. What do you believe? The verdict should be on him who did that to that guy that was unconscious. I personally say death. Death. All right. This is what this thing is coming down to. Being that Yahuwah has called and you did not respond to the call. When your calamity comes, I will laugh at you. Don't pray for these people. Verse 26. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer because Yashara collectively as a people, you hypocrites is what you are. You're hypocrites. All of a sudden now you want to march and you now you want to say, oh, um, the black community. Oh, and, and, and Jesus save us. And then you want to start to remember what happened back there on the, um, on, on the plantations. And you want to get up guys like Al Sharpton, and who, who I believe is a hypocrite. And again, I'm not calling out names to make fun or mockery of, uh, of anybody. But I'm just saying, whenever something goes wrong, and, and, listen, and be careful with the word, the word that I'm about to use. I'm not trying to offend nobody. But the first thing that happens when calamity hits a household, the first thing that the person says is, oh, my God. Oh, my God, we got to go to church and pray. But prior to that incident happening, you enjoyed yourself in wickedness. This is what you did. I understand that when you say God that you're referring to Yahuwah Elohim. But you have lack of understanding with the breakdown of the word. But again, I am compassionate to know what you're talking about. But the father said this. When your calamity comes and you make prayers to me, I would not hear you. Forget you. All right, let me read on. I will not answer. They shall seek me early. But they should not find me for, excuse me, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of Yahuwah. And that's right, the fear of Yahuwah, because without fear, there's no respect. And that goes on both ends. If your Isha doesn't fear you out of respect, she will never respect you. If you don't fear Yahuwah out of respect, you will never fear, okay, Yahuwah. There has to be a level of respect here. As simple as plain as that. I can't get no clearer. Let me read on. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of Yahuwah, they were none of my counsel, they despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. And the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearken unto me, Shammai, Ani, Yasharal. But whoso hearken unto me shall do well in Shalom. And shall be quiet from fear of Ra. All 
Harai evil. All right. It, it, it gets so e easier than that. Let me go to the book of Yeshayahu 65 and 12. In case it hasn't hit home yet. Isaiah 65. Sixty-five and twelve. This is, thus saith Yahuwah. All right. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and you shall all bow down to the slaughter, because when I called you did not answer, when I spoke you did not hear, but did evil before my eyes and choose that wherein I delighted not. So again, what do you believe the end? consequences is going to be when you don't follow Torah. I'm reading it straight out of um, the Hasafarim, the script of the Torah. I'm not making this stuff up. So again, why all of the tears and why all of the emotions regarding these so-called Negroes who are dying at the hands of police officers, do you believe it might be because those same Negroes, those same Puerto Ricans aren't following Torah? And I'm talking about all Israel, all right? I'm not getting to that whole um, um, tribal thing. You know, on the board, Judah is the Negroes, Benjamin is the um, the people from the West Indies, the Levi, the Hades. I'm not talking about that. I'm rough, basically, what I'm saying is that, yes, yeah, sure all, all right, when we see these heinous crimes, being take, um, that's happening in our neighborhoods, just know that these are the, the signs of the times, all right? And this lets us know that our redemption is near. This lets us know that the groom is about to redeem, okay? The Hebrew word door. He's about to door or redeem his bride. This is called a weeding out process. Verse 12 again. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and you shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because, 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 all right? When I called, you did not answer. When I spoke, you did not hear, but did evil before my eyes, and not choose that wherein I delighteth not. You can't tell uh, people to pull up their pants. They walk up and down the street with their pants hanging down. They walk up and down the street with these big headphones, all right, oblivious to what's going on around them. It's just that, you know, um, they're monsters. It tells us in second address, I believe it's six to nine, that menstruous women should bring forth monsters. And the reason why menstruous women are bringing forth monsters is because the women aren't, the women in Israel aren't, doing a proper investigation on who they're laying down with because it's the man that carries the seed. So what's happening now is that the man that they're lying down with, all right, he's only having intercourse with her through through lust, okay? And there's nothing wrong with desire, um, tashukwa. There's nothing wrong with desire. It's just that they, they don't really like the woman. He's not following Torah. His energy is incorrect. So when this man leaves his gift, his essence, his vibration, his Zorah, his seed inside of you, his thoughts, his thinking pattern is, um, is corrupt. You then bring forth a baby from a man that's not following Torah. So now this makes the children monsters. We have a lot of waking up to do, okay? We have a long way to go, but a short time to get there. The groom, Yahushua HaMashiach, died for the bride. The groom is upholding, has always upholding, held his end of the bargain. For Yahuwah said, I am not a man that I shall lie. The problem is the bride. 
The problem has always been the bride. The problem is the woman. The woman is the bride. It was always her problem. Always. Yasharal. We're coming down to the, the last minute. We're coming down to the wire here. We either submit to Torah or the consequences is going to be deadly. I, I don't know what else to say. All right? It is heart moving to see these men and women lying on the ground, being shot up, riddled with bullets. But it is what it is. All praise, respect, and honor to the Father of Yahuwah. All right. Um, let's go to um, two more scriptures. Um, let's go to two more scriptures. Let's go to the book of Yeremi Yahoo. All right. I believe it's the 44th chapter that I'm looking for. So just bear with me a little bit. Forty fourth chapter, okay. Okay. <laughs> verse forty chapter forty four. Chapter forty four. I'm gonna start at verse thirteen. I'm gonna read down a little bit, all right? I I'm, I'm, I wanna make this show at least about an hour and twenty, hour thirty minutes tops, all right. I don't wanna hold you up too long here. But this is very, very important. Um we're in crunch time here, all right? We are, we are in crunch time. Yeremiyahu, the 44th chapter, verse 13. For Yahuwah says, I will punish them that dwell in the land of Mizraim, as I have punished Jerusalem by the sword, by the famine, and by pestilence, so that none of the remnant of Yehudah, which are gone into the land of um, Egypt to sojourn there, shall escape or remain, that they should return into the land of Yehudah to the which they have desired to return to dwell there, for none shall return, but such as shall escape. This is where it's going to get um, real interesting. At, um, then when all the men knew that their wives had burnt incense into other Elohims, and all the women that stood by a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Misraim, and Pathos answered Jeremiah, saying, now, what you're going to have to do, because I'm jumping in the middle, when, when you get time, please read Yeremiahu, the 44th chapter, because what's happening here, I'm going to give a quick recap. Yeremiahu is pleading with Southern Kingdom. Southern Kingdom, Kingdom is about to go into captivity under the Babylonians. Why? Because Yasharal wants to do her own damn thing. All right? She, she wants to absorb authority. Um, she's not reliable, okay? Collectively, we as a people, we're not reliable people, okay? We're, we're very emotional people. And so Yahu is trying to warn the people to return to the laws, statutes, and commandments. And so after Yahu is explaining all of this to him, Listen to the response that the elders of Yasharal gives Yeremiah. Um, verse 12, and I will show mercy. Now, if they were to come back into covenant relationship, Yahuwah said, I will show mercy unto you that he may have mercy upon you and cause you to return to your own land. But if you but if you say we will not dwell in this land, neither obey the voice of Yahuwah, your Elohim, saying, this just listen to listen to what was said. No, but we will go into the land of Egypt, where we shall see no war, nor hear the uh, the sound of the trumpet, nor uh, have hunger or bread. D that's that's a good one, but actually that's not the one that I, that I was looking for. Um, this is the one, excuse me, I was in 40, 
actually I was uh, I said the actually it is 44 it just I was reading the wrong chapter okay I'm saying the right thing excuse me Yasharal but I was um, in the wrong book but the um, but the illustration that I was given was was 100% was correct let me start at verse 14 this is 40 uh, 414 um, Jeremiah uh, Yahoo is told as for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of Yahuwah now again Jeremiah is trying to correct okay the, the walk of Yasharal and he's explaining to them listen you know what we must return into covenant relationship with the father because something is about to happen to the city that you trust. It's about to be besieged. It got to the point where Yerimiyahu would tell the king, listen, you know what? Don't fight against the Babylonians. Open up the doors. Okay. Submit to the will of the Babylonians because it's by the will of the father Yahuwah because we broke the law, statutes and commandments. And the king told Yahu, you know, listen, you know what? If you come before me again, you're going to die. All right? We're going to continue to fight and be disobedient. But listen to after all of the words of Yahuwah, this is what the elders of Israel said. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name Yahuwah, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense into the queen of Shamayim and to pour our drink offerings into her as we have done we and our fathers our kings and our princes in the cities of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem for them for then we have plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil but since we left off to burn incense to the queen of Shamayim and to pour out drink offerings unto her we have want, wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And so that's a very, very detrimental, that is a very sad thing to hear. After Yahu explains what is about to happen, the elders of Israel said to Yahu, this is what you do. You go back and tell Yahuwah, all right? You go back and tell Yahuwah that the thing that he wants us to do, to shub, to return, we will not do it. Okay? The hell with that. This is what we said collectively as a people. We will not follow Torah, but we will continue to do whatever we devise out of our own head. Our own thoughts, we would do that. Go tell Yahuwah that. This is what we did collectively as a people. We said that we will continue to follow Christianity. We will continue to follow Islam. We will forget, uh, uh, continue to follow all these pagan holidays. Because we see that when we do those things, we are blessed. We could, we're going to continue following the queen of heaven. And so, Yahuwah's response is this. This is what they told you, Yahu, to tell me? To forget me? Okay then, let the chips fall where they may. They're going to go into captivity. And the Babylonians are going to come. And they're going to rape their daughters. They're going to rape their wives and they're going to rape their sons. They're going to kill their sons. They're going to kill their wives and they're going to kill their children. I'm going to also make them because of their rebellion. I'm going to make them eat their own children. Meaning this, you know what? In the siege. All right. Because there's no food coming in. There's no water coming in. All of this is blocked off, all right? We're going to starve those Israelites that's, that's, that's um, trusting in the city because the walls are strong, all right? We're going to starve them to death. So this is what happened. 
I keep. Okay. Um, tonight. All right. Um, yum. Um, ya, um, yalal. Tonight. All right. We're going to a uh, call each. All right. Your daughter. Or your son. And tomorrow night, I'm going to cook and roast my son or daughter. All right. Because we were eating our own children in the siege. And this happened because of disobedience. We ate our children. We ate clothing, leather, anything. We ate uh, roaches, rats, all of this stuff, vermin, everything that we, we ate these things because the city was being besieged. But prior to the city being besieged, Yahu told Yashara, listen, to Shub, return. Teshuba, to repent. And I can hold back or even destroy those Babylonians. But the word came back to Jeremiah again. The elder said, tell Yahuwah, tell him, we will not abide by your laws, statutes, and commandments. I'm not going to do it. Screw that. Absolutely not. Know what I'm going to do? This is the Torah, all right? We'll do it, but, you know, this is our version of the Torah. And this looks like this to us. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what's happening, Yasharal. Uh, let's go to one more scripture, all right? And then I'll end it there. Let's go to one more scripture. Uh, bear me, with me for a minute here. Let me see what's in uh, the book of Tehillim, the 91st chapter. Can I squeeze that in? 91. Um... Uh, I do that. I do Tehillim ninety one last. Let me next go to Yakaskuyal, the book of Ezekiel. Let's go to da, 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 da. let's go to. Bear with me one second here. One second, one second. Let's go to the book of Yakaz Kuyal, the ninth chapter. I'm going to start at the first verse. He cried also in my ears with a loud voice saying, Cause them that have charged over the city to draw near even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with white linen and with a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar, all right? And the esteem of Yahuwah, of Yasharal, was going up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed in white linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And Yahuwah said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that cry or that sigh for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said, in my hearing, go you after him through the city and smite, and smite. Let not your eyes spare neither have you pity slay utterly old and young 
old and young, that means also grandma. All right? Grandma has to follow Torah. When these messengers, these Malachims, um, get, an, get an order from Yahuwah, they're not going to respect your grandma and your grandpa that's 90 years old. They're not going to respect them. When Yahuwah says slay, he means exactly that slay. He means exactly that, all right? Slay utterly old and young, both maids, virgins, who had never even known a man before, kill them also. And little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. What is the mark? The mark, <laughs> the mark is those that cry for the abominations that's done in Yasharal. The mark is the Torah. How are you able to define whether a person is of Yahuwah or not as you observe the person's walk? The mark, Yasharal, is the Torah. But come, not, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. My sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house, and he said unto them, Defile the house, and fill the course with the slain, go you forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slaying them, and I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, Yahuwah, will thou destroy all the residue of Yasharal in the pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? So what Yeremi, uh, so what uh, Brother Yakaz Kuyal was saying, he saw a great slaughter in Yasharal. My argument is this, that those that were being slaughtered were those that didn't have the mark and who were not following Torah. Those, that the one, those were the ones that were dying. Only a remnant is going to be able to make it out of this last captivity here. Only a remnant, according to scripture. Yasharal. I'm talking to the mores out there because we're the ones, okay, who's supposed to be out here showing the, st the strength and the leadership. Don't get caught up in the cares of the world. When we see these death angels, okay, going through the streets of Newark, um, Irvington, um, these are the streets that I knew. I mean, we call it Brick City, all right? When we see the deaths happening in Missouri, all over the place, because Israel is scattered abroad. When we see these deaths happening, listen, my argument is that it's a righteous kill. All right. And I also want to say this, too. Like I told um, a few brothers. And, and, I'm not, and I'm not better than anybody. OK, but I do believe that that I'm different. All right. I, I, I do believe that. I say that to say is that. Um, I'm going to walk this walk to the end. All right. Guaranteed. All right. That's my commitment to Yahuwah, not to you, but to Yahuwah, that I'm going to ride this thing out to the end. The father's name is Yahuwah. His son name is Yahusha. And nobody is going to change my mind on that. Nobody. Mother, father, daughter, wife, children, guaranteed. No, that's that's not going to happen because I had me personally. I had enough. I'm going to ride this thing out to the very end. So now with me saying that, if something was to happen to me in this walk, I wonder, would you, Yasharal, shed a tear for me? Because my goal and my mission, all right, is to teach Torah, not to take nobody else's wife, not to bad, um, bad mouth any brother or sister. It's just that, you know, I want to tabernacle with those that believe in Yahuwah and believe in the Torah. 
and I am more than willing to learn from any other more that's gonna who, who loves me also, or any sister who loves me also that can can say, listen, Kasadova, I need for you to double check this. You might have said this wrong or that wrong, whatever the case might be. I love a brother or sister for that because I'm not perfect, but I am going to ride this thing to the end. All right. And I, and with me saying that again, when something happens to me, okay, when something happens to me, will you, all right, lament for me the way that you lament for those who don't have the mark of Yahuwah on them. That's that's my my my, my question to you. Let's all be almost finished here, all right? Almost done. Verse 9. Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Yasharal. Okay, when it says Israel, we're talking about Northern Kingdom and Yehuda, which is uh, Southern Kingdom, is exceedingly great. You know what that mean? The, the the bride of Yasharal, okay, is a whorish woman. The, the the nation of Yasharal is compared to a woman's menstrual rag. She's filthy. And it says here that her sin is exceedingly great. And the land is full of blood and the city full of, uh, excuse me, perverseness. For they say, Yahuwah hath forsaken the earth and Yahuwah seeth not. And as for me also, my eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their ways upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with, uh, with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. And so this man with this white linen, with this inkhorn, I know what was interesting to me is that he followed the instructions of Yahuwah to the end. Meaning that these men that went out and actually did the slaying, they didn't consider the old man, the old woman, the virgin. Okay, we talking about the woman with the big behind. I mean, she's look. I mean, the hourglass body. I mean, she's never been touched before. All right, this Melakim killed even her. And him, and him, and him, and him, they were obedient to the word. This means, the reason why I brought out the example with the woman, the way that she was shaping everything like that, because a lot of us lose focus, okay, um, with, with women, all right? And so uh, women are nice, they're good, they're beautiful, but we can't have them to, uh, to, to take us off track. And I see here in Ezekiel, the, um, the ninth chapter, where they didn't regard old or young, they were not a respect of persons in regard to Torah. Okay, I wasn't making fun of, of any women or anything like that, all right? But again, the will of Yahuwah must be done. And these death angels here, they were obedient unto the Father Yahuwah. One more scripture and we are done. Yasharal, one more, one more, one more. Um, he said he's going to go to the book of, um, what was this? it? Does it Tehillim 91? I say Tehillim 91. Yes, I did. Tehillim 91. Now, those of us that have the mark, those of us that are crying for the abominations that's done in Israel, this is for you. He that dwelleth in the secret place of Elohim shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say, of Yahuwah, he is my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise, noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. 
Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrows that fly by day. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, because there's going to be a lot of people that's going to die around us, all right? A lot of our loved ones is going to die amongst, um, among us, all right? Even those of our own household, they're going to die. And we have to really examine when these people die, did they die in Torah? And if they didn't die in Torah, let the dead bury the dead. That's what it is. Verse 6. Nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand, listen to that now, a thousand should fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it should not come near thee. Only with an eye shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. And that's right. Negroes are wicked. Israel is wicked. All right. Only with an eye shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked because I has made because thou has made Yahuwah, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. Now, I keep saying Negroes. All right. Um. I'm talking about all Israel, all right? Because I don't want nobody saying, oh, because Salabaz, he's only picking out Negroes, all right? Or, or whatever. Listen, I'm talking about the whole house of Israel collectively as the people. We are wicked, all right? Because I has made the um, Yahuwah, which is my refuge, even the most high that habitation, there shall no evil befall you, because you follow Torah. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling, for he shall give his um, messengers charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways they shall bear thee up in their hands these shall dash thy foot against a stone thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder the young lion and the dragon shall thy trample under feet because he has set his love upon me therefore i will deliver him i will send him on high because he hath known my name yahuwah he shall call upon me yahuwah and i will answer him I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. All right? Show him my salvation. So, Yasharov, that's what I wanted to bring to the table. All right? And one more thing. Who? They're puppets because there are unseen hands that's controlling um, this whole situation. It tells us in the book of Revelation, I believe it's the 18th chapter, where it says that um, Hashatan, uh, he's come down with great wrath because he know that he only has a short time left. And so he's trying to destroy the righteous. And he's using people that look like us to destroy us. Meaning this. What we as a nation need to do, okay, First and foremost, stop buying rap songs, okay? Stop promoting 50 Cent. Stop promoting Biggie Smalls, Tupac, the big guy, the big stomach, uh, the big beard, uh, Rick Ross. All of these guys here that are t calling women bitches, whores, sluts. If um, it ain't no fun, if my homie can't get none, abusing the women, and the women are doing the same thing. Because you now have this woman, um, this girl named, um, what's this girl named? The one with the funny hair. Uh, her name is um, Nicki Minaj. Okay. She's talking about how a man's penis, his rod, has to be the size of a horse because she likes it when her guts are busted up. You, you know, all of this, this foolishness. All right. So this teaches our children to be promiscuous. These songs, even Beyonce. Jay-Z, all of these guys, they, they teach our children to be promiscuous, to be drug dealers, to wear their pants um, um, sagging down. They teach them how to gamble, to buy expensive things that they can't afford. Stop buying your children those CDs, those records, whatever. Stop buying that. Because what I see what's happening is that being that music is a form of... Um, how can I say it, it, it's, it's a communication device. It's uh, music. Um, it sets the tone. And so it, it programs. That's the word I'm looking for. It, it programs you. And so when you see your children with the um, Dr. Dre headphones, 
these big old headphones, all right, and they're playing this negative music all the time. It's it's um it's it's formulated something in them where they become monsters. Because I remember even back in the day when I would listen to certain types of music, it would make me it's, it's like um that that estrogen, um uh that testosterone, um that serotonin, that adrenaline would, would build up where it make me want to do things. There are songs that make you want to be intimate with your with, with your with your wives. There are songs that that make you do bad things. You, you know by listening to certain music. All right. So I just wanted to say that. All right? I don't want to hold you up no um no more because okay? there's there's a whole lot I have to say. But again, um, teach your children on how they should walk. All right. Tell them to pull up their pants. Um, be mindful of what they listen to on the radio and what they watch on TV, all right? Because um, this now puts our children um, in, in in a light that makes them look like monsters. And I'm gonna tell you myself, okay? This is one quick story. Um, there's a particular uh, spot that I like to eat at on, uh, what street is that? That's on, it's right off 18th Avenue in Newark. It's, that street is South Orange Avenue. Excuse me, South Orange Avenue. Now. There was about there was about maybe ten hootlums, all right. I'm gonna call them hootlums because that's what they were, standing right in front of the door. And I really wanted to get something to eat out of this store here, right? But they was all guarding the door, you know. And I said, you know what? Let me keep on going, all right. It's not even worth the trip, because what's going to happen now is that they're all guarding the door, all right. Um, they, they're not even doing anything. They're just standing in front of the store. If I bump into one of them, all right, and I say, excuse me. I'm going to bump into somebody else where it's going to get out of hand, all right? And then the next thing you know, altercation is going to break out, and then I'm going to find myself happy, you know, where, I, where I'm going to need to defend myself against 10, 15 Negroes who just won't move, who has no respect for um, the elderly or, 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 the, or the older generation. They have no respect. So again, Israel, I can go on and on and on with this message here, but I just want to say... Um, Shabbat Shalom to the nation of Yashiro. Um These things are being done for our um, for our redemption. And just hold fast to that which thou hast, that no man takes thou crown. And with that, I say Shabbat Shalom.